I believe that the presence of God is here for the, uh, obviously I know that when the presence of God shows up, it's a, there's an old saying that we've learned, my wife and I, many of you have learned from years past that when uh, you talk about the Holy Spirit, he shows up. And in his showing up, what he does is he disrupts the normal order and flow of things. Many of us have called it revival. I don't like the term, but it's the best term I guess we have. Awakening is another term. Um, thank you, Lord. In February, um, there was a distinct shift, and I think I said this last week, in this church ministry, in that what happened, what took place was something that that if it were in the natural sense could have been measured on the Richter scale. But because we don't have a scale in the heavenly realm, it simply was a shifting of spiritual alignment to bring things in closer proximity to the second coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming back. It's not a myth. It's not a fairy tale. Jesus is indeed coming back. It is contingent upon us to be ready for his coming. And I believe, I know I am. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate y'all saying something this morning. And we bid welcome to our YouTube audience this morning. And any of our first time guests, welcome. But with that being said, my struggle in my personal life, and I'm going to just deal with a couple things here, has been that this alignment of the church, of the body of Christ, I use those words in connection with one another, has not been what I thought it would look like. And anytime God begins to do something in your life and it doesn't look like what you think it should, many times we have trouble accepting it. Because what we want is we want God the way we want him. And God is not obligated to bring his plan about in your life the way that makes you feel comfortable or look good. Many times the plan of God for your life causes you, certainly I'm talking about me now, causes me to just throw my hands up in, in exasperation and say, I don't know what is going on. And that may not be a faith statement, but that's a real statement as a human being, as a man of God, because I'm not saying it in futility like I'm not going to make it to heaven. I'm just saying this don't look nothing like what I thought it would. So, so, so when I thought that all of the little I's would be dotted and the T's would be crossed in appropriate values in the right places, and it doesn't come that way, I cannot think that somehow or another I've missed God or that God is not still moving in my life. It is those people, I've come to find out in Scripture, it is those people who literally give up just everything. How do I know this? Because the Bible says that about Jesus in Philippians, I think it's the second chapter. Don't quote me on it, but if we have time, we'll turn there. The Bible says about him that he was, although he was the son of God and he was made in the image of God, he, he thought, well, let me say it the right way. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that is not just a figurative sense. It is a literal translation that we should let the mind of Christ be in us just like it was in Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. Now, if I pointed my finger at some of you today and said that you are in the form of God, some of y'all would hit a choke point. Help me out, CT. Choke point. Because choke points are places where the God, the, the God of reality in the scriptures shows up and our humanity has not yet been developed to accept what God said about us. Y'all want a traditional preacher today, right? So, 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 so then if I'm really going to accomplish the God and live, according to John 10, the God kind of life, which is a, a life of abundance, Amen. I've come that you might have and that more abundant. abundant life. We talked about it some time ago, but abundant life encompasses every area of life. So if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to have to do something about my mind. And the way I think, listen, not just about others. As if, if I'm a Republican, I got to do something about my mind and the way I think about Democrats. Amen. I better get on this side because y'all ain't, 
They saying something, y'all ain't saying nothing. So if I stand in front of y'all, y'all might say something. If, 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 if I'm going to do something about my mind, then I've got to do something as a woman how I think about. Y'all still ain't saying nothing. Okay. I'm going to have to do something about my thought process, about my humanity and my existence, whether I'm male, female, black, white, young, old, I'm going to have to do something about it. Because it's the, it is the number one hindrance to my ability to live the God kind of life. People would say, and my wife and I would say, we raise this word, how much, how much attention you pay to the word of God is what really dictates how much of God you have. That's a true statement. But I'm going to take it one, one step further. It's not just how much attention you pay to the word of God, but it literally has how much to do with how much you say the word of God. Because God, now, now I'm, I'm pulling from a whole, Holy Spirit's got me pulling from a whole lot of things this morning, if that's okay. I only got 30 minutes to do it, so I'm going to do it as fast as I can. And y'all know that's hard for me. But, 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 but see, what happens is the imagery that has been created in us has been designed by Satan to cause us to never see God in his true glory. And what we do is we spend, a, listen, we spend a lifetime uh, uh, receiving images and visions. And if I were a man, I'd say I deal with pornography. If I was a woman, I'd say I deal with shopping or I deal with clothing. Come on, don't, don't just don't don't categorize. Don't don't say pornography is bad if you are materialistic in your in your thinking. Both of them are bad. Don't look at food as, oh my God, you know, food, 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 food. Because I would say that you are gluttonous in your thinking and then the person who is uh, uh, anemic or, or, or what's the other word, uh, anorexic, listen, both of them are equally bad. Yeah. So what God does is he says to us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. How many people in here can say that I'm in the form of God? See, 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 some of y'all ain't raising your hands. And you think, well, I just wasn't responding. It's because you think still that in order to be in the form of God, that you are God. You are not God. Amen. Now, y'all ain't said nothing. I'm going to stay over here. You are not God. God is God. I said God is God. So because God is God, then the best you can do is be made in his image like he declared over Adam and Eve. And when he declared it over Adam and Eve, he said specifically about them both that you are a speaking spirit. You cannot afford to be silent. Somebody will die because of your silence. You will have murdered somebody's future because you will not speak up and declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. And so what the devil does is he always brings imagery. That's one of his greatest tools of deception, imagery. We look at rappers and we see all the bling and the blang and all this kind of stuff. And we think, well, all of them are evil, but not all of them are evil. The problem is, is that you have somehow or another locked onto the one thing that the enemy has allowed to register in your thinking. If I'm not into country and western, and I'm a big Patsy Cline fan, y'all can say what you want, don't matter to me. But they say that Patsy Cline was a racist. But I'm not concerned, concerned about her racism. I'm concerned about what I like, and I know it's okay to like country and western. But if, you, if, you, if your thinking is influenced by the world, by the world system, in other words, we get more out of Facebook and Netflix and Instagram and, and what the Kardashians are doing and what this one is driving, what this NBA player, NFL player, what this girl is. Listen, y'all can, can look at me with them holy looks all you want, but everybody in here got a smartphone that images come to every day of the week. And you have to make sure that you are not influenced by things that God has not ordained or authored for your life. Which means you're going to have to, see the word let implies activity. It implies intentional, uh, deliberate thought. If I let Lynette be my wife and she lets me be a husband, that means that we reject all others. Come on somebody. Don't mean others don't come around. They might come around, but listen, the, the rooster in this house... The queen bee in this house, 
I'm letting her be my, she's letting this, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And most of us think it's robbery to consider ourselves God's son and daughters. Help me in this place. You might say, well, I don't think that, Pastor, but you think it by your actions. Yes. Hallelujah. Romans 12 says that we should renew our minds. And the renewal process is a continuum. I'm talking about restoration to harvest this morning. The renewal process is continual. How much time I got? <laughs> Amen. There's a renewing mind. <laughs> I was having a conversation with somebody on yesterday. I knew it when we got on the thought, train of thought that the Lord was going to use it this morning. And I certainly didn't really put it into my memory banks like, like I thought I should or, or would have. If I had my phone with me, I'd have written a note. I didn't have my phone with me. We were just talking. So the Holy Spirit's going to bring it back to my remembrance. But I, this much I do now. Help me, God. The only difference in you and I, or let's say, because we're holy people, Amen. we're righteous people, Amen. we're God's kids, yes, we look like Him, Amen. we're made in His image, Amen. He made in my image. Yes. Just saying. And we have the ability to have his mind. Yes. Isaiah says that we have the same giftings that are upon Jesus. So the only thing that separates you and I as righteous people and all those things I described is somebody who doesn't, who's not accepted that reality is they don't know the same information, you know. And if they do, they haven't acted on it. Am I unspiritual if I don't read yet? Thank you. Got one no. She said, I'm good, I'm good. I want you to think about this. So I want you to use your imaginations. It's good to have an imagination. Amen. Just don't let that imagination get out of control. Amen. Don't let that imagination tell you that you should kill, take your own life. Amen. You, might, you might think I'm, I'm kidding there, but I'm telling you that, that, that suggestion and that ideation is coming more and more to the people of God. That's right. Amen. You better know. Don't let that imagination tell you it's okay to sleep with whoever you want to. Amen. It's a lie. It's fornication. Amen. It's against God's will. Amen. It's a sin against your body. Amen. Don't let that imagination tell you you can go in Walmart and just take something and say, well, bless the Lord. No, he didn't bless you. <laughs> Somebody in line in front of you drops their wallet, drops $20, and you put your foot on it. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Don't let that imagination get out of control. But, but, but listen to me now. So, so what, what happens then is this is how the Lord showed it to me. There are two people traveling a lifetime. That lifetime by the word of God is how many years? 120. 120. Uh-huh. Some of y'all can't answer that because y'all. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not what he said. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, life point, man. I'll tell you, life point is so good. So they're both traveling the same road. They both have the same promise, do they not? I said, do they not? One knows Jesus, one does not. That's a problem. That's a real problem. The Bible says that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are death. So they're traveling the road. Let's, 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 let's pull on the unbeliever for a minute. They walk the path. They get up every day like you and I. They set the alarms. They do life. They go to work. They make money. They invest, they save. New concept for the, for the Americans, but they save money. They don't get into debt. They don't wrong anybody. They just live a good, high quality life. Excel in school, excel in the military, excel in their profession. They are the best uh, 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 tow truck driver that ever drove a truck in your particular city. They love life. They love their children, have not done wrong by their wife, have not done, done wrong by their husband, have not done wrong by their children. They live this life in an expectation that, hey, I'm good to go. And as they live this life, 
They, they just go about life every day in a 24-hour cycle without any real plan to die. But rather, their investment is in this side of eternity. And side note, we already live in eternity. So that's their life. And then there's the other guy, the other lady, the Christian who has accepted Jesus Christ. I could go somewhere with a third, but I'm not going to do that because there are many people that say that they are Christians that are not actually Christians and are not actually ready to meet God, but they walk this life thinking that I'm good because I said a prayer one day or I was baptized when I was young. And that ain't going to get the job done. But those that are really Christians, those that are strive, reaching for discipleship, they're reaching for another engagement expecting that God has something greater. And while I'm here, I'm going to get all that I can off the table of life, according to Psalm 23, but I'm going to get all that I can, but I'm not investing in this place, this world, this universe, this current life existence, because it is only temporary. And they know that. How many of y'all know that? Doesn't mean that we can be like an ostrich and take our head in the sand and just wait until the till the till till the till the till the rapture. No, 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 no. You got you, you need to get out that thinking because it ain't no good. But anyway, this group, they go and they do all the things that they can according to the word of God. They, they live their life in expectation of miracles. Help me, God. They live this life in expecting, expectation of somebody being saved and born again, of healing and deliverance. They lay their hands on the sick and they recover. They go forth and they, they cast out devils. And, and they, if, they, if, they, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They can, they can step on a scorpion or a serpent and it will not, it will not harm them. Them. They believe that Jesus Christ is the same. Yes, today, yesterday, and forevermore. This group is on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. But they walk a same parallel path. Every day, I'm the one on fire, and I walk next to my brother who doesn't know what I know. And I'm quiet. Now, let me fast forward a little bit because of time. When I get to heaven, because I'm going to heaven. I'm almost reluctant to say this, Elder Robert, but I'm going to say it anyway. Whether I tell anybody about Jesus or not, I'm still going to heaven. But I don't think the Lord's going to be real happy when he sees me. I don't think I'm going to hear the words well done if I ain't told nobody about Jesus in my 120 years. I just, I just, I just don't see that. You do whatever you want to do with your theology. I just don't see that happening. Doesn't mean I'm not getting in. I doesn't mean, and I, and I ain't seeing Peter standing at the gate. So by the way, anyway, y'all get that later. Anyway, so 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 when I get in, I'm glad to be in. Hallelujah! But when the Lord says, "Listen, I had this for you, but you you did not do what I asked you to do, and because you would not serve in the children's ministry." Because you would not serve in the parking lot. Because you thought it, you were too good for that. Eh, yeah, it didn't get paid. Thank you, somebody. I don't know who said it, but, but you weren't paying me. So, but, but, but Jesus, they wasn't paying me. So I wasn't, you know, I'm just saying, Lord, I got bills to pay. Whatever it is, I'm still getting into heaven. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. But here's the difference. When the other person comes, and they stand before the Lord, did not know that they had to one day stand before him because I didn't tell them. And God put me in their life to tell them. But I didn't think enough of them. And really, the truth be told, I didn't think enough about Jesus. Tell them. Oh, I know it's deep in here right now. Is that okay? So when they stand before the Lord, no man is exempt from this. This is an appointment you will keep. You ain't going to be late for this one. You ain't going to say, I forgot that we had a meeting, Jesus. You're not going to come up with, well, the baby's sick and I can't show up today. You go show up for this appointment. Be you man or woman, saved or unsaved, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 
It's a done deal. Only thing you don't know is what your appointed time is. God help me this morning. But I'm ready whenever the appointment time is. So this person, good person, say good person. Meets their death appointment. And they come. Let's, let's a little twist in the scenario. Can I do that real quick? Let's say that one day, one day, just one day, one Sunday, out of all of their 120 years, I'm really reaching now, they came into life point. Let's say today is that, this is the day, today. Let's, can we do that? Because we're living in today. So they came in or they tuned in by YouTube. And came across this broadcast. So they did hear. Got me God. But because they did not pursue what they heard. It really fell on deaf ears. Okay. Can I do that? So this same person comes up. They stand before the Lord. And the Lord says. Hi. I don't think we have any Billies in here. Hopefully no Billies in the audience. Hi Billy. William. As I named you. Through your parents. Give an account of your stewardship, your life on earth. William says, or Billy, call me Billy, Jesus. <laughs> okay, Billy, still got to give an account. Billy says, I thought that I was okay because I lived a life where I didn't, I didn't try to hurt nobody. I never stole a thing in my life. I never told a lie. I never did my wife wrong. I never did my children wrong. I never stole a paper clip from my boss. I never clocked in late and changed the time. I didn't call somebody and tell them clock me in when I stopped at Starbucks to get coffee and I knew I was going to be late. I have not been dishonest in any way. And the Lord said, okay. Wait right here. And then he calls up Johnny Do Good. No, we got Johnny in here, so let me let me change it up. Uh, Zeke, we, we ain't got no Zeke, 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 who has had a life filled with turmoil, trials, tests, and temptations. Zeke, who in his former life was a was a gangster. Zeke, who in his former life not only did his wife wrong, not only did his children wrong, not only lied on his taxes, not only cheated anybody he could, but was proud to announce it. But somewhere on the road of his life, the Damascus road, he had this encounter because he walked in across the right person's path or walked into the right doors of the right church at the right time by the leading of the spirit, he falls on his face, not necessarily have to do that, but he says, God, I am a sinful man. Forgive me. I want you as my Lord. When he gets to a certain point in his life, he's still got his past history, but God doesn't mark his life until he sees the blood of Jesus has been applied to that life. So everything he did, although it was wrong and dirty and no good, God doesn't hold it against him. Help me somebody. So they both walk up. Now Jesus says, okay, Zeke, you stand right here. And what did I say his name was? Billy says, I knew him. I knew, I know he did people wrong. I know, I saw what he did. I, I, I don't know why he did it, but I know that he did it. And the Lord says, you're right, Billy. Zeke did do this. But there's one distinct difference in your life and his life. Help me, God. The Bible says that it is by sacrifice that Jesus made the ability for all men to be righteous. I go back to Philippians 4. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, with that being said, what happens is 
These people that have walked this life, and you and I are walking this path right now. That's what I'm saying. And don't think I'm talking about two abstract individuals. I'm talking about us right now. Zeke walks up with the understanding <laughs> and looks at Jesus and says this to him. Come on now, help me. Use your imagination. I told you to use your imagination. I don't know why you did it. I don't even know how you did it. But I know that you did it. I didn't understand when I read in your word that I have been made to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I, I couldn't grasp the concept. And I really believe it though. I believe it. I believe it because I know that there was a day that came when, when I left my past behind and I became, according to 2 Corinthians 5, a new creation within you. He says, I don't know how much you love me, but I know that you do love me because the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, and you are that one. And so he says to him, master, I haven't been perfect, but I've told everybody I know it. And I even met Billy, but Billy doesn't remember that I told him because Billy's eyes were blinded to truth. He says, but if you can use me as nothing as you've done, exceed, receive me into your kingdom and I'll do whatever you say. And Jesus says, well done. Come on in, my good and faithful servant. And, and, and but Billy's like dumbfounded because he did all this. Even up to the day he came in. But Jesus says he repented of his sin. And I received it. Now, here's, here's Billy. The tragedy of Billy. And I'm going to shorten it up. I don't have much time. Billy, Billy, Billy says, but look at my life. I have wronged no man. I have done all things to the best of my ability. And yet, what do I get? Jesus says, I'm glad you asked. You get the reward that has been set aside for my enemy. I hate to tell you that you're going to eternal damnation, but that is your destiny. I have to say to you, depart from me, you wicked and evil servant, because you didn't know me. But, but Billy says, I knew about you. I knew that your name was, your real name was Yeshua. I went to Sunday school and VBS, Vacation Bible School. I went to youth camp and, and I, I, I knew that. But, but, but and, and Jesus says, but you did not accept the one thing that changes all things. What is that? I'm glad you asked. The difference now is that if I live the life of Billy and I don't think I need Jesus, Although maybe I've never been told or even I've been told and I haven't accepted Jesus. When I, the, the enemy's job is to deceive me all the way to the end. The Bible says that we are not ignorant of his devices. The Bible says that you have overcome him as dear children for greater is he that is in you. That, but if he's not in you, you can't overcome them. So when they get to the conclusion of their lives, which everybody's headed to, Jesus has to say, the difference simply is this, Billy. When Zeke was walking, he encountered me at maybe his lowest point in his life. And he didn't reject me when he encountered me. He didn't understand the commitment that he made. He didn't understand the confession that he made, but he made the confession. He meant it from his heart. And because he meant it from his heart, I could restore him to what I intended for him to be in the first place. And although he didn't live but a short time later, he came. And when he came up to the place where, the, listen, where the penalty must be paid. When he stood here, I stood with him. Because the penalty was paid by me. Billy, on the other hand, living a good life, doing all things perfect and well and sufficient, 
did not understand that the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 4, I think it is, that in whom the God of this world hath blinded them that believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel would shine unto them, he walked the life and never saw, heard, or received the gospel. So he could not, because you cannot be born again without the gospel. Except there be a preacher, except he be sent or she be sent, you cannot hear the truth of the word. Y'all ain't saying nothing this morning, but that's true. So when Billy stands here now, Jesus says, here's the difference. Because you did not accept me, you have to pay the price for your own journey. So I can't pick up your tab. You chose to leave it in your own hands and your own thought and devices and expect that at the end of the journey, I was just going to forget about it. Now, why is that important today? Because I got to turn it now. Okay, I will turn the scripture so some of you will not call me a heretic. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn to the book of Philippians for me, please. Gentlemen, give me, uh, whoever's in the booth, give me Philippians 1 so I can get out your way. I've run over time. Praise God. Philippians, first chapter. Give me the King James Version, please, because this is the expanded, but. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, go to uh, chapter two. Who's got a King James Bible? Give me a King James Bible. Let me have one. Whoever's got one like, that you can spare. Girl, I'm not sure I can read. I can read it though. Yep, yep, yep. Well, why is this significant? Why is this important? Next week, a gentleman by the name of Jerry Savell will be here. Yes! Now, how many of y'all have been through our new partners class? Would you raise your hand so I can see? Okay, all right. Some of y'all yet to go. Okay, put your hands up. Thank you. Glad you're here. The rest of y'all, what y'all we know? <coughs> Just kidding. Just a joke. Um. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hear you, Father. Yes, sir. This, this house, Life Point Christian Faith Center, is prepared to receive him. A year ago, two years ago, three years ago, July will be nine years ago, we were not. And yet, he would have come if we had asked him, but we weren't ready. We're ready now. Not, not because I say so, but because the Spirit of the Lord says so. That's it. That's it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You've got to be spiritual to receive it. You've got to tell you something, but you've got to be spiritual to receive it. Say it one more time. I'm tell you something, but you've got to be spiritual to receive it. You ain't going to get much out of him if you just consider him to be Jerry. Boy, Jerry's coming. You don't even know him. Let me pick on somebody. Who can I pick on? Sade, can I pick on you? We met, I don't know, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. If I had never met her, I wouldn't have known her name was Shade. Now, I knew her mom, but I didn't know her. I couldn't even introduce myself properly unless I couldn't get anything out of her life unless I know her name, right? Now, to be clear, his name is Jerry. And you go up to him, you say, hey, Jerry, how you doing? Like, you know him? See, you got to be spiritual to receive this. Well, what's the problem with that? Right there. Your attitude. Because, see, I know this. Now, I'll tell you, I'm going to give you some insight. I ain't going to leave you hanging. And I know right where I'm at. Uh, probably the best thing to call him that he would be pleased with is Brother Jerry. That's what everybody calls him, Brother Jerry, Brother Jerry, Brother Jerry. I call him Dad. You can't call him Dad unless he's your dad. Because he has imparted enough, he and his wife have imparted enough into my life that he is a spiritual father to me. 
Sometimes I call him Dr. Savelle. When I introduce him, I will probably introduce him as Dr. Savelle. Okay? He is all that. Let me tell you what else he is. Now, I'm, not, this, I'm not preaching on Jerry Savelle. He's a man. Amen. <clears throat> but he is a man who has walked the path. This is his 50th year of ministry without a scandal. Never had an affair. Never got caught with a prostitute. Never let, let one himself near women. How do you know that? Because I know the man. Are you feeling me this morning? So, so with that, we're ready to receive this gift. Now, he could go by the term apostle, but he chooses not to. He could go by the term evangelist, prophet. He's all those things. God has gifted this man in such a way that this house will be blessed. But you have to be ready to receive him. Now, with that, <clears throat> I'm just telling you what I know, and it's on record because it's going on YouTube, and I ain't, nobody told me to say this, but the Holy Ghost, what I'm saying. The Lord is priming us and prepping us to receive gifts of this caliber more and more. Amen. I'm going to say this by the Spirit of God. Somebody said, boy, I wouldn't say that. Well, you ain't me. <laughs> I don't care. I ain't got a reputation. I'm going to read it to you in just a second. They're getting ready to build a new uh, auditorium over here, Right? Over in Corville, right? About 7,500 seat auditorium. You know what the Lord told me when I first, first saw that and thought about it? He said, I want you to invite Kenneth Copeland to come preach there. Amen. Now, some of you don't know Kenneth Copeland really don't mean nothing to you. But see, these men are now in the latter seasons of their lives. And their time on the earth, Brother Copeland has said publicly and quite proud of him. If you know him, good Lord, the man is doing better now than he was probably 30 years ago. But he said he's going to live to be 120. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. God bless him. But with coming to live to 100, 120, you're going to attend a whole lot of funerals. And you're going to have to endure a lot of things. But what God does is he prepares a region or a territory for the for the entrance of the right gifts, ministry gifts, to bring about change in the region. S somebody had to stand up and start declaring the impossible in order to God show us signs, wonders, and miracles. And y'all folks in here hear this every Sunday. You should never, never think that you have to qualify for what God has. You are already qualified. So, so with that, um, I have, I have, you know, and I, I'm going to do it at the time of the Lord. I'm going to tell you, y'all, 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 what? I, is he bragging? This? Come on now. Y'all know me better than that. The Lord has given me a list of people to invite. But my, 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 our father had to be first. Now, next Sunday, the one who got us started on this journey, Apostle Walter Roberts, will be bringing the message next Sunday. And, and he has been as influential as anybody in my life and in our growth and development. Okay. But with that being said, I'm going to invite John Bevere. There you go. I'm going to invite Jesse Duplantis. I'm going to invite Terry Savelle Ford. And whoever else beyond that, the Lord. And like I said, Brother Coleman at the right time. Because God is changing this place. And he's doing it. Listen, he's doing it because of you. He's doing it because of you, not me. Not me. All I can do is be a mouthpiece for God. And then that if that word falls, the Bible says about Samuel, the, the prophet Samuel, one such and something so powerful that it's just ridiculous when you see it, that when Samuel spoke, the words that he spoke would never fall to the ground. But rather they would be received by the people. And I'm telling you, y'all have been receiving stuff that just some of y'all think, oh, my God. Y'all, that's that's just Pastor Tommy. But, you know, it's been bearing witness with your spirit. OK. So when he comes next week, he coming, you know, we're going to have a great time. I'm going to tell you how to dress it up. You dress however you want, but I'm going to come looking good. I always do anyway. I always do anyway. Amen. <laughs> come looking how you want to look. It's up to you. And we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a lot of guests, a lot of visitors, okay? And this place is going to be wide open for those of you that weren't here last Sunday. Man, wasn't last Sunday night amazing? Jeez. Woo. That Sunday night was, the house got rocked up in here. But with that being said, I'm just telling you, and what I get ready to read to you, I want you to understand why I'm saying it. So, did you find Philippians yet? Why are you still in chapter one? <laughs> chapter two. 
If y'all were in the spirit, y'all would have caught it. I'm just kidding. The heading in here, in the, in the, in the, um, the margin here, says, be of one accord and one mind. God will never, no, listen, look up at me. Stop reading. Stop reading. Stop it. Stop it now. Stop reading. I know y'all. Oh, that's good. Stop it. We ain't even got it yet. <laughs> Remember when the power of the Holy Ghost fell on the church? When did it happen? But what does it say about the, the day of Pentecost? They were what? On one accord. And we are, I don't want to say there yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Can you say, look to your neighbor and say, we're getting there. Come on, tell somebody, we're getting there. So stop, don't come up to me and tell me, Pastor, why were all these seats empty? Don't do that to me. Did y'all hear what I said? Some of y'all hear what I said because y'all were still caught up in your own joke. Don't come up and tell, to me, tell me, where's so-and-so? Not my business. Pray for him. Call him if you must, but not my business because I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the one of court step. And also, you know, you know, I mean, if I can control who's here every Sunday, this place would be full if I could control it. If I could say, well, you know, by God's grace, you know, I'm going to dress you in the morning and I'm going to call you and make your coffee by remote, you know, by your smart house. And I'm going to put donuts fresh baked out there and I'm going to give you a wake up call and rub your little eyes like I do my grandson. And I'm going to tousle your hair and make you come on. Come on, baby. Listen, if we had to do that, then I don't need you. God don't need you if you got to do all that. Oh, OK. Two and one. If there be therefore, Philippians 2, verse 1, any consolation in Christ. Mm. Consolation in Christ. Let me read this from, from the expanded Bible real quick, just so you can get a, get a better understanding. If there therefore be any consolation, hold on one second. One second. One, one second. Okay. Does your life in Christ give you strength? Or if there is any encouragement in Christ, does his love comfort you? Can you say yes to that? Okay. Then he says, if that's the case, uh, 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 if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels and mercies uh, fulfill you, my joy. He's getting ready to tell you what the joy Paul's writing here. He's getting ready to tell you what the joy is. That we be what? Like-minded, having what? The same love. Being of what? One accord of one mind. Now, that one mind doesn't mean have the mind of Pastor Tommy or Reverend Robin, Pastor Nett. That one mind means having the mind of Christ. And you can't do it unless you do it by faith. Let me tell you what the mind of Christ looks like real quick. If, if, if uh, 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 I can't pick on you. Glory to God. Come here from back there. Come here, come here, come here. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Just stand in the middle so everybody can see you. If I, don't back up a little bit more, right there, okay? The mind of Christ means if I don't like what he's got on. <laughs> well, he didn't know what I was going to say when I come up. He looks fine. But if I don't like it, if I don't like it, if I think he's back in the 90s, <laughs> and then I laugh across the aisle, oh, do I have the mind of Christ? Now, they're just kidding. They're just kidding. They're just kidding. I'm not throwing no shade. But are you feeling me? Right. If I don't like the fact that he wears glasses, because I think everybody wears glasses should be wearing contacts. <laughs> Who said get over it? Get over it. <laughs> okay? Now, 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 stay with me, because if, if he would Go sit down. 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 Come here, Tina. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Tina don't never like me to call on her. <laughs> come here, Tina. Come here, Tina, one of the best servants in this house. Stand right there in the middle, Tina. If I don't like Tina because she got a pantsuit on, and I think she should be wearing something else, I don't have the mind of Christ. Thank you. <laughs> now, I, I'm, I'm picking, I'm picking on, on minor things. But see, it's the Bible says it's the little foxes that destroy vines. 
And I come in here with a critical, judgmental, you know, acting on spiritual spirit. But you know what? I saw somebody drop a cigarette out there before they came in. Not literally. I'm just saying that. And I think somehow or another they unrighteous. You are not having the mind of Christ. Ooh, it, it got quiet in that one. Will smokers go to heaven? As long as they ain't sinning. Will it kill you? It gets you there quicker. <laughs> but it doesn't mean you're exempt. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Let's keep reading. He says, <laughs> okay, let nothing be done through what? Strife or vain glory. Let me tell you how deadly strife is. Strife is so deadly that the Bible says that where there is strife, there is confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. And confusion looks like I don't know where my life is going. I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm alive. You need to check your love walk and see if there isn't strife somewhere in it. And mo listen, most of the strife that you contend with is not somebody else's fault. Most of the strife that you contend with is not somebody else's fault, it's yours. If not all. Because I have a choice to live with her in peace and harmony. I have a choice to, 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 to look at you and not be judgmental. Not be concerned about your current state. Well, they only work here. You only work there. Y'all get the point. Or vain glory... Vain glory means that I am, casting, I am casting the word shade or judgment on you because I don't want anybody to see what could bring sh judgment or shade on me. So in other words, I put her down before she can get a chance to put me down. I make her feel small because you know I'm all spiritual because I sit on the front row. Because you sit on the front, on, front row don't mean nothing. Because you sit in the back don't mean nothing. You can't hide in the back either. Right? He says, but in lowliness of mind. Now, this is, almost sounds like a just, juxtaposition. It almost sounds like contradictory speech. Lowliness of mind simply means that, uh, according to Romans 12, what am I going to do? According to the teaching of Peter, I'm going to humble myself under the hand of God, and in due time, he will exalt me. In other words, I don't think Tommy Roberts is hot stuff. I think and know the king of glory and the Jesus of my life is definitely a volcano happening on the inside of me. He the hot stuff, but he the one getting everything done. And so what I do, I, I take out somebody else's trash. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, I have way too much fun up here. Let me go. I'm way over my time. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let what? Each esteem other better than themselves. We're still talking about restoration and harvest. Because until you find a way to, 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 to lift your brother up who might have fallen, until I can find the strength to pull him up, I will never be complete in Christ. Especially if you put us together. So I'm not going to let him fade in the, in the wallow and the pool of obscurity or sin or death. I'm going to say, listen, man, come on, we can do this. And even if we both get ready to stumble, I, the strength of him and the strength of me will keep us on our feet. And the power of the Holy Ghost, because we esteem each other the same in glory. Yeah. Loneliness of mind that each esteem other better than themselves. Who do you think in this room is better than you? I think everybody is. If I didn't, Doc, I wouldn't get up and preach. You got to be better than me. Because in being better than me, you make me better. But if somehow or another you are beneath me, then, you know, I'll pay more attention to the one I think is above me and leave you in the shadows. And we both fail. And all of a sudden it's like, what happened to that church? They had a church split. There will never be a church split at Life Point Christian Faith, son. How you know that? Because I ain't going to let it happen. Because the last thing you're going to say about me is that he thought he was better than everybody else. <laughs> and I better not catch you acting like you better than somebody else. Because I have every right to call you on it as a brother in Christ, not just as a pastor. Isn't that right? 
Let me keep going. I don't want to bore y'all. Let's keep going. And so he says, verse 4, look not every man to it on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind, back up, Tommy. Yes, sir. Look not every man on his own things. If you're doing that, you're not on one accord. This is the biggie. Pull your religious toes in. God, I am so, f what time is it? My watch stopped. What time is it? It, 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 it? Listen, 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 listen. I'm never going to tell you something that I don't believe I heard from the Holy Ghost. But if you're, if you're looking at this this way, ah, get that I both said about this. Let me read it one more time because I, I, I want to make sure I say it the right way. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In a corporate setting, please hear me, look up at me, Hear me what I'm saying. In a corporate setting, the way that you look on in, in a church setting, the way you look on every somebody else's things and not your own is by giving of yourself. Listen, listen, of yourself first. The Bible says that they gave of themselves first. When Paul in, in 1 Corinthians 9 talks about the church, at, uh, 2 Corinthians 9 at the church of Macedonia, you gave of yourselves first. Come on now. The next thing you did is they prepared to give offerings so that the entire community of Macedonia could be blessed. They weren't even blessing themselves in the house. So if you're looking on your own things, you will be selfish with your time. I still got your Bible. <laughs> You will, listen, you will not show up for meetings and appointments like you are scheduled to do. Because if you're doing that on the outside, you ain't going to be employed. But if you're in the church and you're not doing it, then you are a liar. And you are not a keeper of your word. So you cannot be trusted with the greater things of God. Most liars don't tithe. I'm prepping y'all for more. Be because what God is trying to do, he's trying to get an abundant life to you. But it will never come unless you change the way you think. And if you don't change the way you think, you will not change the way you act. If you do not change the way you act, you will not change your outcome. So, 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 so then what do I do? I give... What I'm supposed to give, whether it's my time, my, my, my money, my, my, myself, whatever it is, I give as, as, as the Lord directs me. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not, and I, ain't got, I guess I got to receive the offering a little bit, so I, you know, I'm glad somebody else ain't got to do it. But, 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 but the reality of it is, God ain't told nobody not to tithe. God ain't told nobody not to keep a commitment. If you say you're going to be there, be there. I'm going to tell you a true story. Do, okay, I got it. There was a, it was a gentleman that used to come to this church. He doesn't come anymore. And he was a gentleman who was at best on the fence of Christianity. In other words, he grew up a particular denomination and reformation, but in the growing up of it, he, he, was, he became very critical. Listen to me. It's a true story. He was, and the Lord pointed this out to me some time ago. He was very critical of Christians because he felt like Christians weren't honest. He came to this church. There were individuals who had made a, a, a promise to him that they would be somewhere that he was trying to help them with at a certain time. And Christians, one after the other, not all, but a lot of them, one after the other, not only did not show up, did not call. And the Lord said that was too much for his mind to handle because the Bible says that he had not let this mind be in him, which was also, he couldn't forgive him. And there is such a root of bitterness in this man today that he's in danger of missing the kingdom. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying this morning. This is a true story. And this gentleman now, I pray for him. I believe God for him. He don't want to talk to me because I am the representative of, of, of the people that didn't keep their word. So when they didn't show up to him, it was like God not showing up. I wish it, I wish it could be gentler than that. But, 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 but see, you don't know who's going to miss that kingdom based on your... <sighs> Let this mind. Let nothing be done for strife and glory. Verse, verse, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, 
thought it not robbery. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. He didn't think that he was robbing God to be equal with God. Many of us today think we're robbing God to be equal with him. But he gave you his power. He gave you his name. He gave you authority. If, 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 if I give TJ my name and a power of authority, a power of attorney or whatever, he can go down and charge anything, buy anything, withdraw anything, do anything in my name. And we as Christians somehow or another think, oh, I'm not worthy. You are a liar. And you are deceived. Stop being not worthy. Let's start. Why, why, do we, why do we gravitate to, I'm not worthy? I don't feel like Jesus loves me. We talked about that last week, the emotions. Get your emotions out of the way. It's like Jesse Planner says, but, but get your butt out of the way. <laughs> Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. I could be going. I'm going to stop right there. Leave some for another time. Thank you very much. Most of us, all of us, at one time or another, if not currently, have struggled with how we see ourselves. How we see ourselves, what we think about ourselves, and more importantly, what we think God thinks about us. Close your Bibles. God don't think nothing bad about you. Even if you're a sinner, you don't think nothing bad about you. You know, think about, think about, you know, and I'm not an advocate of this, but I'm going to tell you this just for sake of understanding. This is absolute truth, absolute, absolute truth. I can prove it to you throughout all of the New Testament. All of the New Testament can prove this. The one thing that stopped Judas from getting back in grace with Jesus is he took his life before he could encounter Jesus again. Jesus wasn't going to hold him hostage. Jesus was not going to hold it against him. Even though he betrayed him, he was not going to do it. In a, in a natural, real world, real world context. Put your religious toes in. And I don't mean any harm. Certainly I'm not an anti-Semite. You know, I, I love Jerusalem. I'm a part of that. But if Adolf Hitler had repented, God would have accepted him. I don't care if y'all don't like it or not. It's true. There's nobody in here outside of the reaches of the love of God and the grace of God. Stop looking at people. You know, I, I met a man yesterday. I was down in Iowa City taking care of something business related. And I saw a man on a bicycle and he looked like a typical homeless man. And uh, I had this box of something that I did not want. And it was heavy. <laughs> and so I didn't want to carry it. And I had no need for it. But I saw him. And he was... Now, he was there ravaging and foraging through uh, the dumpster. And I said, to him, hey, 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 what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for trash. Didn't even turn around. Didn't even acknowledge me. Just heard me and said it. And I mean, he looked like the typical, you know, bag person, if I can say it that way. And I said, hey, I got something for you. You want it? I wasn't, I wasn't being condescending. I said, I got something that I just, I don't want to take. I said, it's metal, because he was looking for cans and bottles. I said, I ain't got no cans, I ain't got no bottles, but I do have something metal. He said, I take metal. And then he, when I, when I offered him something that he wanted, he turned and acknowledged me. Now, now this story doesn't end up where I witnessed to him and, and, and preached to him, because I was doing something else. And I feel no condemnation for not having done that. See, I thought you were a pastor. You're supposed to witness to him. You ain't going to witness to everybody that you come across. Nor are you called to. Oh, I wish I had that. And, and, and some of us feel like we ain't done that because I ain't witnessed to Sally and Susie and Billy Joe and Bobby. You ain't got that kind of time. But whoever the Lord tells you to witness to. And I, I, didn't, I didn't sense any unction in my heart to do that. So I just gave him, I said, here, take this man. He was, he was lit up like a, a Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. He's like, yeah, oh, it's heavy. I said, yeah. He said, this will get me some money. I said, good. Now, he may never remember me. I don't expect him to. Why would he remember me? My point is simply this. When you encounter people, I didn't look down on him because I could have. I could have said, yeah, I didn't get that close. But, yeah, I didn't have to because our exchange wasn't like that. But I'm like, yeah, you know, he all dirty and everything, riding a bike with a little wagon, homemade wagon on the back. You know, you know how you come on. Don't, don't act all holy with me. Don't act like that. Don't act like that with me. I ain't asked you all that. But what I did is I made sure that he, he, did not, he did not dehumanize himself. I did not dehumanize him. 
I gave him something that was going to help him. I hope it did. I'm sure it would. It was worth some money. It was very valuable, but, you know, he took it. So what is the point of all this? The point of all this is that God has chosen this house to do great and mighty things and very special things. But they're only going to be special if you allow this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And, 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 and all of us, every last one of us, can make a difference in somebody's lives. Um, I had a lot of meetings this past week, so if I reference some of them, you were in it. I'm not going to say your name. But somebody said to me, he said, you know, we have to learn to invite people to church, which we do. You know, we've got people that, uh, we've got, <laughs> thank you. He said it's clean. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a baby thing. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> I love Miles, but not all of Miles, you feeling me? Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I left mine at home. But, but, you know, every one of us has a responsibility, not just to fill the seats of life point, but to fill the seats in heaven. And your reward, you do have a reward waiting for you, which is a whole nother topic, whole nother study. If you're taking foundations, or if you're taking driven by eternity, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because when we get to heaven, ladies and gentlemen, we can't say we didn't know because Tommy Roberts preaches that to you or whoever else stands up here preaches that to you all the time, all the time. And we don't know when our time to cross over is. I wish I could say that none of you or none of us would die early. I don't know what early is. I'm 57 years old or will be. And, uh, you know, I constantly hear people say, you don't look that old. Well, tell that to my knee. Tell that to my knee or my when I played ball a good portion of my life and ravaged and I have to believe God for restoration of my knee. Doesn't matter what I feel like, look like. It just matters who I am. Who are you today? Are you Christ in the flesh, in the spirit with his presence in you? It's okay to say yes, because you are. You're not Jesus Christ. You see the difference? See how people get, you know. I'm not Christ. Well, you're Abraham's seed. Amen. Heirs according to the promise. Amen. Joint heirs. Amen. Somebody give me the last name, Gates, and his, my papa's name is Bill. <laughs> and my papa lives in Seattle, Washington. I'm going to the bank with the name Gates. <laughs> Are you feeling it? Yeah. But Christians don't want to do that because they feel like they're taking something, they're robbing God. You ain't robbing God. Jesus proved that you didn't rob God. Amen? All right. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yes. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Would you do that?